Hey everybody, it's Eric, and I'm stuck at home because of coronavirus quarantine, so I want to do a video about ASP.NET query string parsing. We were using uh, ASP.NET Core the other day and had to parse some query strings and modify them a little bit. And there's the old way to parse query strings, but there's also some new APIs in .NET Core, and I was hoping that those would suck less uh, than the old ways. But it turns out mm, that might not be true, so let's take a look. So in the old way, let's imagine that we have a query string and we want to parse it into its constituent name value pairs. We have this HTTP utility and he has a parse query string method and he takes a query string. Now don't put anything before the question mark or that's not gonna fucking work. Uh, but if we've, if we've somehow isolated the query string, we can pass it to this and we'll actually get back something pretty cool, right? Great, so this thing is, uh, what is this thing? This thing is in name value collection, they claim, right? And you can see that we've got our key and we've got our value. And if I wanna actually get this thing back out as a query string, say I've modified it, uh, all I have to do is this, right? Now you'll note here, when I serialize this query string again, even though I passed in a question mark, they helpfully strip that question mark. So make sure that when you put it back on the URL, you add the question mark if you need to. So now we know how to parse a query string and we know how to dump it out. Now let's say we wanna add a parameter to that query string. Now here's where things get interesting. So I can just do this, right? I can say uh, the coronavirus uh, and I'll just say it uh, sucks ass, right? Because I think it does. Now, if we take a look at what comes out, we can say, hey, I'm still awesome. True. And uh, coronavirus here, it sucks ass. Now, a couple things we want to note here. Number one, check this out. There's a plus sign. That's because the URL encoded it for us, which is helpful. Now, remember, this thing says it's a name value collection, but I want to take a quick digression here. Let's say uh, name value, right? If I just got a regular name value collection, right? So that's a thing that I have. If I just have this guy and I do, you know, add Corona and I do sucks ass and then I and then I do two string on this guy. The fuck, right? So when I do two string on this guy, I get the value. When I do it on a regular name value correction, I get the bullshit type name. Why is that? Well, here's one of the things that you always kind of had to know about the old way of doing ASP.NET query string parsing. It's because, right, if we get the type and we dump it, even though this says name value collection, watch what happens. Let me just comment this guy, okay. Oops, it's an HTTP value collection, right? So even though it says name value, no, no, it's a special thing. It's a special thing that has magic helping functions which actually turns out to be really nice, but you can't just use any old name value collection. So now that we've figured out how to add a parameter, right? So now I've got coronavirus sucks ass on here. What if I wanna edit a parameter, right? I wanna see what is the value of this. So if I, the first thing I should do is I should look at, you know, coronavirus. What is this thing, okay? So if we look here, it sucks ass. Now, no, it's not URL encoding it. So it's just giving us back the raw value. Ooh, mm, you know, maybe I want to be a nice guy and I want to clean up my language a little bit. So I'm going to change it to, oops, <laughs> sucks ass, right? Maybe that's better. Okay, great. Now you can see that it's also helpfully included that at sign for me. So that's pretty cool, right? So that's how we edit a parameter with this. It's pretty easy, kind of the same as like dictionary semantics. Uh, no big deal, right? So now let's say I want to remove a parameter, right? So let's say I don't want my name associated with this shit ass coronavirus, right? So parse query string, I'm gonna remove Eric, right? Because that's nothing that I need to do. Great, so now it's just the coronavirus, it's all by himself. Now let's say I wanna do multiple parameters. So I've got parse query string, right? Let's say I wanna add another mm, thing that I wanna say about the coronavirus, right? Because the coronavirus, not only does it suck ass, it's, um, how about, um, uh, is a major pain in the ass, right? Among other things, okay? So now what happens? I've got this guy, coronavirus, and I'm adding another coronavirus. What's it gonna do? Is it gonna replace the existing one? Or is it gonna make two? Hey, look at that. So we've got Eric is awesome still, because, but I've got coronavirus sucks ass, and I've also got coronavirus is a major pain in the ass. So what did it do? It added both of them. Here's where things get interesting. What if I actually wanna get these parameters, right? So what if I wanna say, hey, what for coronavirus, why don't you just go ahead and tell me what your parameters are, right? What is this gonna do? Because there's two of these now. Let's see what happens when I do this. 
Oh, interesting. So here's another one of those special functions that the HTTP value collection has. It, oh, look at this. It sucks ass, comma, is a major pain in the ass. So because the name value collection, the same name can't really be in here twice. So what they've done is they've said, oh, okay, great. Well, we'll just kind of massage this for you, which again is kind of weird, but it's also mostly helpful. So that's kind of how you do things in the old way. So now let's take a look at the new way, right? So imagine we've got the same, the same setup, right? Here's the new API. There's this thing in ASP.NET Core Web Utilities Query Helpers, and it has a parse query thing, and it does the same deal. You can feed it an already sort of trimmed query string, and then you can get things back, right? And so let's just take a look at what this thing is. It is a dictionary of string string values. Now, you might be asking yourself, what the fuck is a string value? And we'll cover that in a second. But if we look, that's indeed what this thing says it spits out. It spits out a dictionary of string string values. Let's see if you remember the old name value collection was actually not a name value collection at all. It was an HP value collection on the covers. Let's see what this guy is. No surprises here. He is what he says on the tin. So at least from that perspective, the new way is a little better. Now let's imagine we want to uh, get, a, I, I want to see this query string back out. So in the old way, what we could do is we could call to string on it and we could dump it, right? And we could see a nice URL encoded query string, right? If you just remember, I just want to point that out again. Here's how we got the beautiful query string back. Let's see what happens this time. Womp womp. Okay, totally fucking useless, right? So yeah, I know it's a dictionary of string string values, right? What I want is a fucking query string coming back out. How do I do that in .NET Core? Mm. So it's actually a new friggin' thing. What you have to do is you have to do query string dot create and pass this thing in, right? And then you can call to string on it. Let's see what that looks like. Hey, now let's note the inconsistency. In the old way, I included this question mark here when I parsed it, but when I two stringed it, it, it would omit the, the question mark. Now the question mark's back on. What happens if I do this? Oh, so now it's always adding the question mark. So the old way always removed the question mark from the query string, and the new way always adds the question mark. So that's really nice and consistent. Um, okay, so now that I know how to actually stringify this thing, right, let's, um, let's move him down here. Okay, so we'll keep dumping him out. Now let's add a parameter to him. Okay, so I can do that pretty easy. So I wanna add, I'm gonna do my coronavirus, right? And we're gonna do the same thing because it still sucks ass. We're still in quarantine. <sighs> so now we've got a little bit of different URL encoding too. So the old one was using plus, right? Which you can debate whether that's correct or not. This new one's using percent twenty, which I think is technically more correct. But you do see a lot of pluses. So, you know, I don't know. It's kind of a six one half dozen the other. Uh, but at least it's URL encoding, right? And so if I do the same thing here, you know, so if I if I do this, oh, what the fuck? Now the at sign isn't getting encoded, right? In the old one, right? If I did this, right? Sucks ass was percent 40 in the new way. Oh, there it is. It's just hanging. What if I do dollar signs? Great. So that's super helpful. What if I do uh, apostrophes? Oh, so now it gets it. Okay, so it's got some different URL encoding rules. Now let's say I want to edit a parameter. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get coronavirus. This works pretty much the same way. Okay, so that's cool. Oh, wait, it doesn't. Okay, because what did I get back? I got back a fucking string values, not just a string. Well, what is a string values? What can we do to this thing? What extra things does string values have? Well, it has a count. Why does it have a count? It has a count because there might be more than one value. If you remember in the old way, when we added two coronavirus parameters, uh, there was still only one value, and when we two stringed it, they just comma separated them, right? So we'd still get a single string back. Well, what they've done in the new .NET Core is they've made the string values primitive, which can have, which can account for null, one, or more parameters, right? So if I look at count here and I dump that, I should see one, I think. Hey, great. Okay, so now I want to set it equal to something. So now I want to say uh, it actually sucks balls, right? That's what it really sucks. Um, okay, so that works the way I'd expect. So there's an implicit cast, right? So, so there's an implicit cast that lets me go from string 
to string values, right? So that's cool and we're happy about that. Let's do, okay, so now, so that's how we edit things and that's fine. Now let's remove a parameter. This works pretty much the same way. So if I wanna remove coronavirus, uh, that's no problem, right? I'm still awesome, of course. But now what does it do with multiple parameters, right? So I'm like, hey, parse query string dot add. I wanna, you know, I wanna talk some more shit about the coronavirus. Um, fucking blows, right? Let me put an apostrophe in here so that we make sure we get the nice URL encoding. Okay. Uh-oh. So remember, in the old way, I could have two coronavirus parameters. I could just add them both and it would sort it out. In the new way, this thing is just a dictionary, right? There's nothing special. There's no magic under the covers. So when I try to add two, I get an item with the same keys already been added. Okay, so now what do I do? Okay, so uh, I've already got a coronavirus, but now I wanna add another one. So can I do this? Can I, can I take the coronavirus? Can I add? So there's no, there's no add. I mean, I guess we can try it, uh, but no, that's, that's not right. Okay, so how do I, what can I do here? So I can't, I can get the enumerator, I can two array this thing and I can two string it. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna need, um, so this is gonna be, you know, I guess new, new values. Uh, so I want a new string values actually. Okay, let's see what I can do with this. It's gonna be new values, okay? Now, let's see, does string values have any helpers? I have concat, okay, that's cool. Um, I can do empty, I can do is number, okay, so let's say, let's say, okay. So let's say I wanna do um, the, the existing one. So that's gonna be this, okay. Uh, and then I wanna do a uh, fucking blow. Right, does this work? Does this give me, so this gives me a new thing and then I set it here and let's see what happens. I don't know why that took so long. Okay, great. So that's what we do in the new world. So we've got to do this concat thing. Now let's say I actually want to do even another one, right? I got even more shit I want to talk about the coronavirus. So let's do the same thing uh, I did up here and let me just actually copy these lines. We're gonna run them again. Um, and I want to say um, is the worst, right? Not, not quite as mean as I was before, maybe. All right, can I just keep doing this over and over? Mm, new value is already defined. That's my bad. Great. So, I mean, we've got some helpers here. So this isn't the worst, but it's also not demonstrably better. So if we look at what we had to do here, we've got string values type, we've got the query helpers type, and we've got the query string type all in the mix to do the same thing that we could just use HTTP utility and it's magic HTTP value collection to do on the other side. So I ask you, is this better? It certainly seems like the API is probably more correct. It sort of makes it obvious that there could be multiple values for a given key and it sort of forces you to handle that correctly, which I guess is nice. But to me, that feels a little bit ivory tower. It feels a little bit like, well, this is technically correct, but we sacrifice developer ergonomics for it. So it's up to you guys which you prefer, but uh, I think I'm gonna stick with the old way.